Joining us now to discuss is Ian Haworth, the host of Off Limits with Ian Haworth. Ian, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me, Jim. Hey, could we be seeing the beginning of the end of wokeism in corporate America? I don't know if about wokeism, but I think this is certainly the start of a very, very long death. I think the fact that the economy is wobbling right now is really proving which jobs matter and which don't. And any jobs to do with DEI or chief diversity officer, all of these kind of things are going straight in the trash can. Because the fact is, when these companies had money to burn, these jobs were good. They allowed them to virtue signal to the left. They would get left alone. But now that money is a little tighter, some of these jobs are going straight into the trash. And I think it's something we should be celebrating. And it used to be one of the safest jobs in corporate America. But now, like you said, it seems that when the economy gets a little bit tighter, companies look at what their balance sheet looks like and says, who do we need? Who, do, who can we keep? And who, do we, can, who can we get rid of? It's these folks that are going there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact is you do not need these jobs because especially in tech, the notion of diversity is meaningless. The only kind of diversity that would actually help would be ideological diversity. They have no interest in that. They don't want to hire conservatives. They want everyone to think the same way, but look different. But how you look doesn't mean you're a good employee or that you add anything new to the company. And so people are really waking up to the fact that this is a completely pointless position. And when you don't have the money for it, suddenly those things matter. I see. And we're starting to see a lot of pushback on wokeism in corporate America from Target to Bud Light to Disney. Consumers are kind of starting to say no more. Are the headcount reductions in DEI departments related to this? Yeah, I think to some extent, I think certainly public facing or consumer based products will be more so because people don't like being spat in the face by the person that they're trying to actually buy from. I think that's where Bud Light and Target and these other companies really went too far. It wasn't about wokeism behind closed doors in the corporate world, where I think people are a little bit more okay with allowing it to happen. But when you're shopping with your child or you're trying to buy a product you've bought for years and suddenly you're being talked down to by a company, I think that's really where people draw the line. So I think we will see corporations take a step back. I don't think they'll take too many steps back because a lot of these places are run by leftists after all. Mm -hmm. They'll keep pushing, maybe a little slower, but it's certainly good to show that they will actually wake up to something if we put our feet down strongly enough. Yeah, and I do think it's also related to how substitutable that product is, right? Anyone can substitute a Miller Lite or a Coors Light for Bud Light. Mm -hmm. It might get a little bit more uh, difficult if uh, you're looking for a new bank that's not well, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact is that <laughs> Bud Light is uh, fighting against a lot of other great products out there. And so it's not that hard to go half a yard down the counter and then pick a different product that isn't looking down its nose at you. And so I think, especially in the world of big tech too, we simply don't have that many choices. But I think the answer there is we need to be fighting harder for conservatives' rights to use and be expressing their views on those platforms as well. So a lot to fight for still. Absolutely. And you know, in addition to the backlash against wokeism, we're seeing re consumers reward those who don't go woke, which I find very interesting. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers hockey player Ivan Provorov refused to wear a pride-themed jersey back in January. The woke media went crazy, but then his jersey sales briefly topped all NFL jersey sales, and he was fairly unknown. Uh, you know, meanwhile, Jason Aldean's song, Try That in a Small Town, is now number two on the charts. Do you think these are anomalies, or are we starting to see a movement here? I think it's to some extent a movement. I think it's indicative of really the pendulum effect in our culture where everything is so split that it's not about whether you like someone's position or not. It's just about the counter position. And so you have someone like Jason Aldean putting out a song that's, you know, great. People are enjoying it. But a lot of people are flocking to it because they're so fed up of the other side. And so I think we're either going to see one or two things. Either this will keep happening until really segment society into one of two sides where both sides hate each other and both sides are almost doing free marketing for each other. Or hopefully the pendulum will swing back and to the point where music, entertainment, things like that just aren't politically linked. I think I would much rather go back to a world where we can just enjoy music, enjoy beer, and be politically left alone while doing so. Think about this. We have to bring politics into sitting back, drinking a beer, and listening to our favorite music. It, it's, it really is a truly crazy world. But you know, one of the things I was thinking of here is that you know, what could we be doing in our own lives to support this movement and to drive wokeness out of our culture? Should we be supporting places like Public Square, Patriot Mobile, companies that share the beliefs of people who are more conservative, as opposed to going and giving our money to companies that hate our beliefs? Yeah, I think it's going to be different for each person. I think everyone just has to decide what they're willing to stand for, what line can or cannot be crossed, and then make decisions with your with your um, wallet when you do so. I think not everyone is going to make the same decision. A lot of people don't, say, have the budget to shift yeah. over companies. Some things you just can't get away from. Not everyone can change providers for every single um, service, for example. It's all about the personal choice of what you're happy with 
And if we're being treated badly, there's so many other options out there who are willing to take your money and not look <laughs> down their nose at you. Ian, I agree with you. And you know, it, it seems that we can and will be able to defeat the woke agenda. agenda. It's a winnable war, but I'm wondering how fight the war are we, are, we, are we on the right track? Are we doing the right things? Or what would you tell someone who wants to fight this woke war to do? Yeah, I think first is approach it with honesty. I think the issue whenever I see these kind of splits in society come up is there's a lot of opportunity for money to be made. And frankly, a lot of grifting goes on. I think there are a lot of great people out there who are true to their values and providing good products and services. So I think we need to be digging a little deeper, making sure people aren't just capitalizing on division supporting local businesses, supporting family businesses, businesses that have been around for generations. They're often pushing conservative values, but they don't get the attention. The larger corporations that come in to try and undercut those businesses usually do better. And so I think sometimes doing a bit of research and trying to look for some of these more established companies that have been around for years, have been pushing conservative values for years, I think they're the ones who deserve our support as part of this battle. Ian, I couldn't agree with you more, and I thank you very much for being here with us tonight.